at the end of the day, just tired and exhausted. And I told Grayson I would hang out with him for a little bit. And I was upstairs and I told him to wait downstairs for me. And uh, he, he came upstairs anyways. And like I barked at him and all he was trying to do is tell me uh, that I had done a good job on something. But I felt like such a doofus and just such a jerk. But I remember thinking like, wow, like I'm so glad we homeschool. Like he's not going to school the next day. He's not gonna be gone from me for 12 hours. Like I get more chances. Like when you homeschool, you get more chances with your kids. We tell our kids like, hey, we're sorry. I'm sorry. Like I should not have responded that way. Please forgive me. And you don't get that chance when they're gone in school all day. Hi, you're listening to the Zan Tyler Podcast. When my family started our homeschooling journey, there were so many decisions to make. But one of our best decisions was choosing to use BJU Press Homeschool. I've never seen my kids so excited to get textbooks before. I'm amazed by how interesting and interactive the lessons are. My kids actually look forward to them. We use the online video lessons for all our courses, but I know some families choose to teach from the textbooks. What I love is that I can trust BJU Press to uphold our values. The Bible and biblical principles are woven throughout each subject. I'll admit, I was a bit nervous when I started homeschooling, but I've found a wonderful online community of other BJU Press homeschool families and consultants. The Homeschool Hub also makes my job easier. I can set up our schedules and rearrange them with just a few clicks. On the dashboard, I can see each of my kids' progress, and the assignments page shows me quickly what's ready for me to check or grade. I'm glad my son's biology assignments are automatically graded. BJU Press Homeschool has given us the tools and confidence to homeschool our children. For more information, do what I did and visit the BJU Press Homeschool website or talk with your local HomeWorks consultant. Well, welcome everybody. Today it is my great pleasure to have Caleb and Stephanie Price on the podcast. Caleb is my producer. There would be no Zan Tyler podcast without Caleb. And uh, Caleb and Stephanie have five littles under six. They've got a great family and a lot of challenges to face with that many littles. So all of you who have had multiple children can really identify where they are in life right now. So welcome, Caleb and Stephanie. Thank you. Yes, multiple challenges, five (laughs) challenges. Every day. Every day. (laughs) And at night. <laughs> day and night. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is. So, everything's kind of a blur. So tell us the ages of the kids, Stephanie. Yeah, we have our oldest is uh, Grayson. He is six. Emery Rose is five. Addison is two. And our twins are 20 months, almost two. 20 months. Yeah. Twins. Twin, Twin. boys. Yeah. And Finn so and how many boys? How many girls? Two girls, three boys. And we're not going for the third girl. No. (laughs) That'll come with grandkids. That'll be fine. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to have a lot of fun with those kids as they get older. We already do. Yeah. They are. It's the shaking out process right now. Yes. Shaking out. (laughs) Yeah. The life is a blur. It's all just. Yeah. And And then we moved across the country. We were by Los Angeles. We were in Ventura. Yeah, we wanted a better life, better homeschool community, and so we moved to Colorado Springs. So we've lived in Colorado Springs for like a like a Two week. Weeks. How are you liking it, or is it too early to tell? Oh no, we love it. Oh, we love it. We this has been like a four to five year journey to get here. <laughs> California's got a lot of good attributes, and there are homeschool yeah. families. For us, um, it was crushing and oppressive and a little communist. So we decided <laughs> that <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Well, and you've gone from a very small house, which is typical, to much more space. And that's got to be a deal changer. Yes, we are so grateful. Even just seeing our kids (laughs) kind of confused, like, where do we go? (laughs) I mean, I think four out of the five have never seen snow or any kind of that. So you're right. Yeah. Only one. Ask us how we are in a couple months when it starts snowing. (laughs) Yeah. I saw on marketplace around here, we see like snow blowers for sale. I'm like, Oh yeah. Like (laughs) what, what is that contraption in the garage? Yeah. And the the homeschool community out here is huge. There's like three BJU press consultants just in like in this area. Right. Um, Right. So 
Stephanie, one of the things that Caleb had texted me about, you know, just questions is how do you find a homeschooling community? Mm -hmm. And, you know, really, I was able to put you in touch with my friend, Barb West, who yes. will be um, interviewing for the podcast on Monday. And sometimes all you need to find a community is one good contact. Yes. Yes. I, I have found that finding friends on social media has become a new thing, especially for our generation. And right it wasn't super successful for me so far. And so just having Barb, just sitting down and going to coffee with her was so encouraging and just having her say like, oh, you'd fit really in here. And these are, this is a good group that seems like kind of your homeschool philosophy. Yeah. I mean, this whole lifestyle choice is about relationships. Yes. So that's, that's been hard about the move. I mean, relationship is so difficult and it takes so much work. Um, mm -hmm. And when you're starting, I think it kind of hit us pretty recently. It's like, yeah, you're starting from scratch. It's, it's hard when you have your hands full. Legally, if we're together, we are at capacity for a child daycare, daycare. because the law is, <laughs> is, what is the law? It's five, five, five children to two. Two adults. And then yeah, that doesn't if you have account a, for like babies under two. So Right. And that doesn't account for babies under two. So yeah, legal, legally, you're not supposed to go out alone with all those kids anyways. <laughs> If you were taking, <laughs> it so, is a party anywhere we go, though. So we we probably. do have a lot of joy and fun and stress at all at the same time. Children really are a blessing, and the older you get, mm -hmm. they get, and the older you get, you will love being surrounded by all the kids and eventually all the grandkids. So, yeah. hey, Caleb, tell us about your homeschooling journey and the unique way you were drawn into homeschooling at least in the people we've met, we're very different because I haven't met anyone in the homeschooling community where the dad was the first one on board. In fact, there's whole books and seminars written on how to get the husband on board. You know what right. I mean? You speak at these conferences, so you've seen that, like, yeah. that's a whole thing, yeah. like how you. Yeah. And Joe does one called the yeah, reluctant homeschool dad. Yeah. So that was definitely our story. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a filmmaker and I own a podcast production company. Obviously I do the Zan Tyler podcast among Kirks and others. And, um, before that I was mainly just producing and directing films. And so I was working with Kirk on a few ideas and projects. And he said, um, Kayla, we should really do the homeschooling. Like there's this big community there. And then I, Kirk, uh, he homeschooled his six kids, him and his wife. And so I knew nothing. And he said, yeah, I think we should do a documentary. It's this crazy movement. This is right before COVID. And I said, I think that sounds terrible. And I would like to make a movie on anything else <laughs> than homeschooling. <laughs> that sound, and he, he's like, I'm telling you, just start doing some research. So I start doing some research and very quickly realized, oh, this is a, I thought it was tops a few thousand people in the country, but it's not, it's millions. And it's this huge movement. And then I met a lot of the people that have actually been on your podcast now, Alex Newman. And Crossman. Big, and mm -hmm. Crossman, big advocates. And so- uh, COVID hits. Um, we take a very small production team. I got, I wanted to approach it in, in honesty, which would be like, I know nothing. So let's make a movie about that. And it's called the homeschool awakening. Like let's, you know, let's go find some families who are still doing it right now. Oh, Todd Wilson's in it too. And he's in episode one. Yes. So if anyone missed yes. that, you should go check the show notes and listen to all of those. Those are really good episodes of the Zan Tyler podcast, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> shameless plug for uh, your show. Spoken but like it, a true <laughs> producer. That's right. But um, we'll put them right there. And we had done preschool a little bit and we hated it. Hated it. Just like every mom. Why don't you tell, like, tell her about that feeling you had just dropping them off? Yeah, we had done preschool when I had, um, Grayson was two and I had just had Emery. Dropping him off just felt horrible. Every time something fell off and I think that we've been, I don't think we've, we've been conditioned to just feel like that feeling is normal and, right. um, for me, it was horrible and I didn't know that it was, there was a reason that that was so bad. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. after months, diff actually very different reasons. So he was just getting sick all the time. We we're like, okay, we That's can't, right. we can't pay for this anymore. It's not right. Um, but economical. I remember that you, you cried. Yes. I, almost every day. I felt a bad every day. The break was not worth it for me. Looking back now, that was a three hour break that, um, there were just other ways we could have facilitated that, which now we've learned. And now homeschool has fit our life right. and really, really well. And there's probably 
a place for preschool for some families. Yeah, I'm not, 100%. I'm not anti, anti advocating. What would you call it? I'm not, <laughs> you're not against home. I'm not preschool. dissing preschool, yeah. but I think the Holy spirit mm-hmm. like tells you, like, we're just so conditioned that we're, that parents aren't supposed to be parents. Like we're so conditioned that like, Hey, just get them fed and then get them off to the system. And ideally you can get them off to the system real early. Like, like you know, yeah, three. That's right. And I, I remember dropping Grayson off too at the preschool and feeling sick to my stomach. But yeah, it's the same thing because all these parents are doing it and you're leaving at the same time they are. Right. So you feel like, why do I feel like this is so wrong, but I'm seeing everyone else do it. So it must be correct. I yeah, think that's a important, the Holy spirit. When you, when you walk into that, everyone has their own conviction, but I think that's a huge part of my homeschooling journey is really leaning into that. And that could totally be an okay option for another family. Um, but for us, that was one of the main things that I can see now looking back how sweet his voice was to huh. like, and now looking back, we know what that was and mm. just being more aware going forward, whether something works or that it won't. Right. Yeah. So, cause I'm doing this movie and we're just yeah. thinking, we'll just go to school. I mean, like most people have been on your podcast, right, so right. you just kind of, it's it's probably how you... did. yeah, yeah. It's what yeah. Did. And then it's, and so I'm start interviewing these families, um, and immediately I'm kind of taken aback because first off, they're all very social. I mean, number one problem that comes up, right? Well, what about socialization? It's like, well, school is the least normal. The school system is the most farce social system in the world. Like where on earth do you ever enter a space with people only your exact age in the workplace, in the, no, nowhere, like doesn't exist. And so I'm starting so all of a sudden my whole, my whole brain paradigm is starting to get ripped apart. And what's scary is when you start looking at what culture has said is normal and you've, and you start just to like, okay, God, maybe I should follow what you're leading. It can be a very scary turn Mm -hmm. because if you start to unfold one layer of culture that you thought was normal, you kind of have to start looking at other layers too. And you begin to realize, you know, Oh wait, maybe it's not always normal that the family, you know, the mom goes away and works, the dad goes away and works and the kids, not, not only do the kids go away, but not even together. And then they split them apart. And then maybe with sports and everything, best case scenario, you get 20 minutes together where you're not exhausted. You know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. all of these things start hitting my head. Cause I'm interviewing these families, asking them really kind of dumb questions. Cause I don't know, you know what I mean? I'm literally like, right. where's the right. desks? And they're like, welcome to our couch. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? They're like, or here's the kitchen tape. Just like, you know, because you've done this now. And so I'm having a blast, right? And I'm calling Steph, who's home alone with, at this point, with all the kids, with all the kids. I'm like, we're homeschooling. And she's like, you can like, what do you, what? That was legitimately my response. I was like, no way you can come home when we, when you come home, you can have them for two weeks. (laughs) And I'll fly around the country. I'll go watch all the footage. So I'm getting this, I mean, God, Zan, God just like worked it out for us. Like, honestly, Zan, it was just, it's kind of almost unfair. And I worked really hard on it to make it the best we could with, with Kirk and went to theaters and did well. And you can now get it anywhere. It's on Amazon prime. (laughs) It's on Walmart's at target. But, um, I felt like I was just getting this awakening. Yeah. Homeschool awakening. I'm just getting this dump of education, right? Like I'm just learning all of this information. I'm just like, oh my goodness. And so that's how we decided like. I think we have to restructure our entire paradigm of what life even means. Yeah, I think that it took an extra six months for me to jump on board. And I am so grateful. It's actually taken so much pressure off as a mom. Like Mm. I can, and parents just in general, I think that we can structure our life however we want. And we learned really early that it didn't have to look like other people. It's, It's hard, but what we've learned is, um, or what the God has been teaching us is anything in life worth doing is on the other side of hard. And you, I mean, you look at the Bible, you look at one of the famous ones, David, right? He's in the field, minding his own business and he gets anointed like, wow, you're going to be the King. And any other story would be like, right. Like God just got you and you're the King and he's going to carry you over. And it's this chariot's going to show up and it's going to be beautiful. But it's like, no, you read the book and his life was in danger. His family was in danger. He had to kill a giant. He was on the run. And then he has to live in Philistine territory. I mean, imagine David at some point was like, God, so I was anointed the King and I'm starting to feel like maybe being a shepherd would have worked out a little better. Like, (laughs) and then, 
And then he's supposed to go fight against the Israelites, his own people. And now his men hate him. So they're marching they're like, I guess we'll do this. And then the king of the, the Philistine king is like, actually, I don't trust you when you go back to your people. And then so David's like, oh, thank God you've answered my prayers. He goes back to his wife and all the kids. And they've all been kidnapped by the Amalekites. You know what I mean? It's just like boom yeah, after boom after boom after, after boom after yeah. boom after boom. But anything in life worth doing is on the other side of hard. And yeah. what happens? David and gives the most powerful Braveheart style speech in the Bible. His men are rallied. They run all day and night. They save everyone's woman and ch child, everyone's wife and child. No one's harmed shortly after he becomes king. And he's the, he is the, the line of David is Jesus. So yeah. we've realized like, yeah, this is hard. And I would never choose anything else, else than this because you only get one life. Like, like my kid's only you know, going to be a child little once. Much. That's right. That's right. You know, Joe does a devotion. I don't know if Joe can stick his head in here or not, <laughs> but he does. Um, a, He does a devotion on, on that very pack, pa uh, passage. Here you go. I'm coming. <laughs> I love can it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get your mic in there, Joe, please. All right. I've got this. Okay. You got to scoot over. All right. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Okay. So uh, the amazing thing to me is, you know, once David got to the to the back to the camp that had been burned and routed, his men wanted to stone him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a great, uh, I don't know, great message about leadership. You know, some people think, yeah. boy, if they're leaders, isn't that great? And um, man, David really faced it. But what he did is he sought the Lord you know, and strengthen himself in the Lord. And he asked God, what do we do? And uh, he really uh, had the impression from God that he should go after and, uh, you know, attempt yeah. to to uh, catch up with the bad guys and uh, rescue everybody. And the men had already been traveling like 24 hours yeah, without any food. And they, they were already the demoralized because they were looking forward to a fight and had no fight. And now he wanted them to, they, I mean, some of the men <laughs> cried so hard, it said that they could not go forward. So he went forward with about half his men anyway. Yeah, it said th 300 so, collapsed or something like so, that. So, you know, my point is, and because you can stay if you want to. You can stay, Joe. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, um, but <laughs> the Zan Tyler podcast where you're constantly surprised. <laughs> but, you know, the thing I love is, is that homeschooling is hard. It's particularly mm -hmm. hard when you have five children under six. And, you know, there are all kinds of strategies that we can talk about. What do you do to rejuvenate yourself? How do you teach multiple children together? But, you know, at the core of it all, I think David's answer is it. You strengthen yourself in the Lord as a believer. Okay. And then you can look at strategies. But I think sometimes we get it backwards. And um, right. I think if there's nothing else we talk about today, it's that. Yeah. You know, yeah. like Stephanie talking about the Holy Spirit speaking to her and you alluding to that passage in the other side of heart. You know, I wish I could tell people it's easy and it is great. It's the best thing we ever did. But to say that it's not hard, whenever I, I see homeschooling made easy, I want to say run. <laughs> lie. <Yeah. laughs> it's, <true>. it's a <laughs> lie. Yeah. And I think that's so actually I'm encouraged by that story, even as a mom, like looking at that, like his own people wanted to stone him. Some days that's how we feel. <laughs> like, my own kids want to stone me today. <laughs> I'm going to have to encourage myself in the Lord to get through this day. And other days uh, you feel like a queen or a king and you feel like you've gotten through that. And thank God we have both. And that's mm -hmm. been um, what holds me sane, honestly, and some days not so sane. Just the willingness yeah. to know that even when they revolt, we're going to be okay. Exactly. That is a really interesting take from that. That's message. pretty intense. But... <laughs> but no, it's, I mean, it's so true. Like, so I was at the end of the day, just tired and exhausted. And I told Grace and I would hang out with him for a little bit. And I was upstairs and I told him to wait downstairs for me. And, uh, he, he came upstairs anyways. And like, I barked at him and all he was trying to do is tell me uh, that I had done a good job on something. That's literally all he's trying to do. And if I cry, I'll edit that out too. 
but I felt like <laughs> such a doofus and just such a jerk. But I remember thinking like, wow, like I'm so glad we homeschool Yeah, because I think there's all the benefits are going to happen when you least expect them. And it's like, because we homeschool, like he's not going to school the next day. He's not going to be gone from me for 12 hours. Like I get more chances. Like when right. you homeschool, right. you get more chances with your kids. Cause yeah, we've got, we have bad days. I get intense mm -hmm. and I get snappy, but you know what? Like we can reset and then we can like, we tell our kids like, Hey, we're sorry. I'm sorry. Like I should not have responded that way. Please forgive me. And you don't get that chance when they're gone in school all day. You know, you have, a, yeah. you have a busy rushed morning. You are hurrying them out to school. Like I remember that and like getting a fight with my sisters and my parents and like, I wouldn't see them until that night. You know, I remember Joe talking about that a lot because, you know, as our kids got into junior high school and high school, I, I, I was exhausted. You know, we'd been in the legislature. We, Joe was traveling. I just thought now's a great time to put the kids in school. And Joe said, oh, we're not putting our kids in school <laughs> in junior high school. But then when, they got, <laughs> then when we get to high school, you know, all of a sudden I feel the Lord calling me to homeschool. Now, this is in the 90s where we feel like we're laying the track for homeschooling in high school. You sort were. Of the freight train we appreciate you guys. Us, you know? yes. Thank you. And, um, and, and so, but it was, okay, now, as my sister used to say, now I lost my track of train. Um, but we're... <laughs> <laughs> so we're, you know, and Joe says, surely in high school, our boys are athletes. We're going to put the kids in school in high school. And then I feel the Lord calling us to homeschool in high school. So as a couple, we came to that. But tell them what our, you know, as you observe people in church and just our friends. Well, it was it was interesting to me because we when we began homeschooling, there were others that began homeschooling. And gradually people would put their kids in school. And I noticed that the families just weren't as close. We had a, uh, a pastor that had been in the army, was a chaplain in Germany. And he told me, uh, when he, when he came to our church, he put his kids in the Christian school that was associated with our church. Cause he kind of felt like y'all to do that, you know, to encourage the church. And he told me, he said, you know, family's just not as close as it used to be. We used mm -hmm. to, uh, Every evening after dinner, we would discuss what the kids had learned that day. We clear the table, a, a game night would break out. And, um, he said, and after the kids started school, they were anxious to go communicate with their friends at night, you know, weren't as, weren't as willing or whatever to, uh, participate in the, the family games. So, uh, the beauty of it to me is what you keep your kids from and what you keep them to you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, we can just tell that so many of our friends that put their kids, even in good Christian schools, they just became a little bit more peer dependent, you know, and more, and, and, and the schedule as well, your, your schedule becomes tied to whatever the, ca the school calendar is. And, yeah. um, it just reduces your freedoms that, that you yeah. want to have as a family that we thought was a great blessing to us. So one thing, I just wanted to talk about for a minute, um, Stephanie, Caleb and I were talking about things that might help you and other people with a lot of littles. And one of the things was, how do you know when we can combine ages? You know, mm -hmm. when can we put our kids together in learning? So, so I've got one or two thoughts on that. And I want to tell you what I did right and what I did wrong and how the Lord brings good out of all those things, I think, as long as we're seeking him. So I think it, it, the kids, have, you know, the things you can do together are read alouds and family devotions and go into the grocery store and, you know, just living life together. Um, when you're in reading and math, those are more skill driven. And so you teach reading, you know, to where the child is. The, I mean, you can't teach a four-year-old and a six-year-old reading at the same right. time because they're on different levels of readiness and everything else. So right. there's that. And then, you know, when we started homeschooling Ty in high school, John was in the seventh grade and Lizzie was going into the first grade. Well, I tried to get Lizzie to let me hold her back a year. She said, nothing doing. <laughs> and I was afraid, you know. So, right. so the funny story is because then I had one in high school and one in middle school and I'm thinking, I can't do this. So poor John, I looked at him one day and I said, John, you're in the, you who was in the seventh grade. I said, you are officially in high school. 
<laughs> and so we, we just started, John just skipped the seventh and eighth grade and went right into all the courses Ty was taking in high school. Well, Aww. the fun thing about that was John had the proclivity to do that. You know, he was academically gifted, but the fun thing about that was he finished most, most of his coursework, not all of it. I think he still had physics left, but most of his coursework in high school in the 10th grade. And wow. so we had so two years really of creativity where he could travel with teen pack and um, traveled all over the United States doing different types of things. And so, you know, that really, he's a lawyer today, didn't hurt his education. <laughs> um, so, so that was really pretty amazing. And Lizzie, who I was worried about getting lost in the focus. So we, you know, I believe in phonics. We um, had a great phonics program. Then we used BJU Press in first and second grade with the boys. Um, they were the only people selling to homeschoolers at the time that would share <laughs> yeah. their teacher's right. manuals. Um, but the funny thing about Lizzie is she was using a different program because I needed her to be independent. Um, and so every day she got up and I realized she was reading the teacher sections and then filling out the little first grade section. And oh, I looked at oh her one day, I said, I mean, this is awful. I said, Lizzie, when did you learn how to read? I mean, she just started reading wow. out of the blue. Oh, so and, and I told her, you know, if you can read the teacher's directions, you probably don't need to fill out all the little <laughs> yeah. questions for first graders, you know. That's so, and, that's so funny. That's probably giving but, her the answers. Was, yeah, and then yeah, the boys were seven and eight when they started reading. So yeah, you know, that's just the great thing about homeschooling. And you know, so there you combine ages and stages and books and all types of things. There are some things you can't combine, but it is fun it. because as a family they're all learning from where the other child is. I have no doubt Lizzie learned how to read because she grew up watching the boys reading and, you know, doing, doing those things. So, so I, I think that's very encouraging. So we live as opposites in probably most things personality. You and me. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm an extreme extrovert. extrovert. I'm like, an introvert. It, it, Something we're learning on how to process manage is how, to homeschool as an introvert mom when you have so many children. I think just like figuring out, I guess my question is how do you figure out how to recharge as a mom so you can do all the things? And tell me too, so, so I can facilitate that for my <laughs> wife, please. <laughs> well, so I've got two responses for that. And then Joe may want to speak to this a little bit. So I called a good friend of mine today, Stephanie, who has um, seven children under 10. And once upon a time, they had five children under six. And she is introverted. And so I asked Elizabeth, I said, what did you do? And I had heard her say before, when the oldest child turns eight, it's like a milestone. Um, because then your children are getting older. They can buckle themselves in. They can buckle yeah. the babies in the car seats. All of a sudden you have some, you know, when you have one or two that start reading, they're a little more independent in their work. But here are some of the things she told me, and I thought they had such great merit. She said, as you work with your children and you live life with them and you teach them to unload the groceries from the car and the little ones to, you know, put dishes in the dishwasher and you grow up with this helping mentality, then you become more skilled as a mom and they become more skilled as human beings. Mm -hmm. And so as they get older, your life is easier. Your life is harder right now, but your life becomes easier, you know, with every year your kids move up. But the one thing she said that was really helpful was she said, we worked really hard um, during when the, the, to put the kid, when the, the younger ones, the very little ones went down for nap time in the morning, we did the schoolwork. Mm -hmm. um, and then in the afternoon, we worked hard so that all of our kids for one hour at the same time every day are in their rooms. They don't have to sleep once they get past a certain age, but they're all in their rooms for one hour. And that's her recharge time during the day. Mm -hmm. And I know I wasn't as, I wasn't as successful about that because <laughs> I just really didn't need the personal, you, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, um, but the people I know who did that, 
faithfully, it was really a game changer for them mm. to always work toward that hour. I mean, there's some, there are going to be days it doesn't work out. You can't right. hold yourself to that like you're a failure if it doesn't happen. Right. Um, but then um, Joe, Joe can probably speak to some of the things he did for me. <laughs> one, <laughs> on that subject, one, one of uh, our friends, uh, they had like eight or nine kids and she had a thing where she would put, if she put something on her head, like a cap or a doily or napkin or whatever it was <laughs> around, <laughs> nobody could ask her anything. So she, <laughs> she fixed a meal or something. She'd be in there with this doily on her head and the kids <laughs> knew, do not talk to me. So <laughs> I thought that was a great coping mechanism. But, um, I, I know, uh, sp <laughs> speaking to dads, um, they really need to, uh, study their wives. Um, I think it's great that husbands realize how their wives' personalities are so different. I mean, I've, I've got a son that's a extreme extra extrovert and his wife is very introverted and it, and it works. You know, and I think the key is for the husband to understand how they're different. Uh, and I think newlyweds probably, I can just imagine it. The, the extroverted husband is trying to pull his wife and all this fun stuff that he wants to do with all these people. And yep. she's like, oh man, I'd rather just kind of go, you know, sit by myself somewhere. Yeah. Uh, but there's, there's that adjustment period. That's uh, as much of a marriage question as anything, but I think a husband really yeah. does have to study his wife. Like it says in first Peter and, uh, figure out, uh, ways to encourage her. I think the biggest challenge in a marriage about homeschooling is for some reason, homeschool moms have the biggest guilt reservoir of any group in the world. And yeah, they're constantly, uh, you know, wanting to get depressed about one thing that happened that day with one of their children without realizing that there were 50 great things that happened with the other ones. And I think, uh, you just have to stay, uh, focused and, and grounded. And the husband has to constantly, uh, encourage his wife, you know, and, uh, take on a, take on a, a pain, uh, that she may have, uh, and just run in the home. I mean, could be laundry, could be shopping. Yeah, Joe started doing the grocery shopping. Because I like to eat. That's right. <laughs> he likes to eat a whole lot more than I do. And, uh, it was self-preservation, but it worked. <laughs> shopping leads to eating. Yeah. That's, that's not right. necessarily something all women. Women are fine with just like, I don't know, chocolate. You know, that's all they need. But men need that something a little bit sexist. more. All those things are really encouraging. And I think I actually... You're probably one of the most involved dad I, dads I know. So you do a great job at being involved in anything I ask. Um, I do. I think if we're talking strategies that have helped us, we're also reeling a little bit because of the move. Move, yeah, totally. Which yeah. kids or no oh, kids, moving's hard. I've never moved out of state oh. ever. And that hit me. And the amount of strategy that had to go into this. And U-Haul, man, the truck I got was like $200. But the moment I told them I was leaving with California, to California with their truck, it jumped to four thousand two hundred dollars. <laughs> Good, <laughs> yes. no gracious. way! Well, a, a hack we've learned, and so I'm going to say this whole thing because I really think this would help your listeners because it sounds bougie, but it's not, <laughs> and it's very affordable. But get a personal assistant. Personal assistants are very inexpensive if they're digital only, yeah. and a digital only personal assistant will run your calendar, your family calendar. If you ask them to, we pay, I think I pay her $28 a month. You don't have to do your whole homeschool schedule, but you figure out what you need, like what my wife needs. And I just dump it in a word document. Like, please make sure Stephanie has three hours of alone time a week. I need to work. Cause I work for my, you know, on the business. So please make sure I'm working five hours a day. Here are the kids nap times. I want to make sure I get three date nights with Steph. Here's child child care. Yeah, th yeah, three date nights a month. <laughs> here's here's the child care. Nice, here's the child care contact <laughs> yeah, info. Really. And they'll and they just do the whole thing. And then we just obey the calendar. And I've noticed this is the, the first month in a while we haven't done that yeah. because we moved and immediately felt the effects. Because what would happen before is and you guys know you're in the throws, you're just going, but when we have the schedule and it says, Oh, babe, it says you're supposed to leave right now for an hour and I've got it. She's like, Oh. Deuces. 
and she just grabs the keys and takes <laughs> off. Because of course I want to give that to her, but if it's not written down in our schedule, we won't do it. Yeah. Um, and that's even helped with homeschooling too. You know, this is a little bit different, but it's kind of along the same theme. I remember when um, Joe was traveling a lot with his work. So I was home, you know, by myself with the kids. Lizzie was two, John and Ty were nine and seven. And we were involved legislatively a lot. So I'm right. trying to, you know, work with the boys in homeschooling, take care of Lizzie as a toddler. Oh, by the way, two days a week, I have to pack everybody up and go downtown to the legislature. So you don't go to jail. <laughs> yeah. And I looked at Joe when he got home one day from traveling. I said, I can't do this. I mean, I was so burnt out, but it was so good because we prayed about it together. I mean, sometimes I can That's just so talk good. to Joe, just, you know, just talking about it helps. Mm -hmm. And so we started praying and a week later, a really dear friend of mine called and said, Hey, you know, Christy just graduated from high school. She doesn't want to know what she wants to do next year. Could you use a mommy's helper two or three yes. days a week for $5 yeah. an hour? I mean, you know, and, and it, Christy came in and helped me for probably a year or two. And sometimes it was just three hours a week. Sometimes it was six hours a week. And it really changed my life. So I had been real particular about what the boys were eating for lunch. She would fix them hot dogs and box macaroni and cheese. I didn't Delicious. care. I didn't, I didn't fix know. it. <laughs> Every, you know, my philosophy was every school yes, has an unhealthy good. cafeteria. <laughs> you know, so sometimes you just you take the good instead of the perfect, but it was, yes. you know, I've seen the Lord two or three times when I really got at the end of my rope and Joe and I would talk and we would pray and the Lord would send somebody to help me. Hmm. You know, it, he wants us to succeed hmm. in homeschooling yes. and he, you know, he is waiting to bless us. I love what Spurgeon, Charles Spurgeon says, the rule of the kingdom is asking. And oh. sometimes we just forget he's our father and we need that to ask so him good. and he sins, you know? And um, so those are, th that's just a sort of a different take on a different kind of personal assistant. I love that. But, is but, really it's, helpful. but that's really good. I, I love that. Would you say it's, it's easy to get overwhelmed? And the last thing we can really think about is a solution or strategy. Yes. It's, we have found the success is I have found as a husband that women are supposed to feel things and it's okay. <laughs> Feelings are not bad <laughs> and you don't have to solve it right away. But what we have learned, so there's this funny skit they show in every church. Uh, you guys have probably seen with the, the woman with the nail out of her head. You know what I'm talking about? She's like complaining <laughs> yeah, about everyone's yeah. seen that skit. You've seen that, right? You know, <laughs> yeah. well, I was talking with some other dads and they said, the only problem with that thing is they basically say, oh yeah, it's not about the nail. She just wants you to listen. But I've noticed, and correct me if I'm wrong, later you do want to talk about it. Not right then, right? Be then you need to be heard. Come, come up with a solution. But yes. later you do want, hey, I'm feeling better. I have a nail in my head. So let's maybe go to a surgeon. Like, like there is a time. And I think like you just said, Zan, like, Joe, I can't do this anymore. And you prayed, there was a solution. And that solution was not right in front of you. And that, your solution is extra cool because it came completely out of a spiritual left field. But there was right, a solution yep. that get, bought you so much bandwidth. And hmm. I think that just reminds me how much more we have to rely on the Lord. Yeah. The basis of homeschooling is really relationship. Yeah. Hmm. And so you put a lot of time into relationships and then you build the education on top of it is makes for a powerful education as well. Yeah. I want my kid to read, but I could care less if that he can quote the periodic table. If my son doesn't have a relationship with me, that's good. Zan that you've given us a lot to think about. Well, thank y'all so much for being here. We're praying for you and your move and raising all your littles and Caleb. We so appreciate you and, Thank yeah, you. I'm here. All the oh, there, do you see Grayson now? I do. He'll, be, hey, Grayson. he'll be in the video. That's fine. <laughs> this is Grayson. He's our oldest. You know, we tell him we tell him that he's the leader, and so we try to. Now I can't be careful with that again. He wants me he wants to take to him camping. camping again. That's what he just said, <laughs> which we will do. Well, we're so grateful for this, and you know, thank you so much. Yes, if, thank you. Um, people don't know this because they're probably hearing, but I we do call Zan and ask for help and advice. <laughs> And I, I email her and ask for help. And do you want to talk about the movie? Tell people where they can find the movie. Or sure. Find you yeah. Or... If you want to watch the movie, it's called the homeschool awakening. If you just type in homeschool awakening, Kirk Cameron, it's everywhere. It's um right now 
Pure Flix just licensed it. So if you have a Pure Flix subscription, you can watch it there for free. But it's also on all the major platforms to rent or buy. So it's on Amazon Prime, Walmart, Target, Amazon has it on DVD. Um, you can reach out to me. You can go to thepodcastupload.com. That's my website. And even just producing this podcast has been one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my life. And I know I've learned a lot. I've learned I learned a lot every time with every guest you have. Right now, you should listen on Apple Podcasts. If you're not already subscribed, make sure we're also on YouTube. <laughs> just YouTube Zan Tyler Podcast. Hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell so you'll be notified. Be sure to leave a Zan a five star review on Apple Podcasts. That really helps us out. And share with your friends. The show is good and it helps people. So share it with everybody you know. Well, thank you all so much for being here. I want to thank our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. And we are going to sign off now. And uh, thank you for being here. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>